are sort of the major headlines in head and neck cancer over the last 18 months or so. Um, so I, I, I'm going to just talk about the general principles, really, and then the sort of big things that have happened, which is really about the staging for oropharyngeal cancer, the, the phase three trials, the major ones that have reported that, I, that are going to shape the way we manage patients in the future, what the new standard of care is going to look like, and just a couple of studies on the horizon, which are UK studies. Um, so I mean, the general principles with head and neck cancer is, you know, we, we're always trying to reduce toxicity and improve outcomes. Um, and the big thing that has happened in the last few years is the addition of targeted drugs so the PD-1 inhibitors like pembrolizumab and nivolumab to primary, uh, to primary chemo radiation for high risk disease and in the metastatic setting. Um, and I've just put the trials on the slide. So Keynote 412 is really the one that's looking at adding uh, um, pembrolizumab to chemo radiation. And it's in red because it's we finished recruiting a year ago and the results will be coming out probably by the end of this year. Um, we know there's established um, a, a nivolumab in second line uh, from the Checkmate 141 um, study, but um, there is also data in the first line setting now with the Keynote um, 48 study, which I'll talk about, so using uh, immunotherapy in the first line. Um, with the, the HPV-positive oropharyngeal cancers, obviously the focus has been on de-escalation of treatment because these patients do much better and they've got a better prognosis. Um, so I'll talk about de-escalate, which has reported, and Pathos, which is currently recruiting. And I'm sure many of you have seen patients uh, who are coming through who have been recruited into Pathos. I think the other big thing to, to talk about, which I will um, start with, is really there's a move away from anatomical outlining to geometric, geometric target volume delineation uh, to reduce toxicity. So the sort of passport style treating an entire subsite to a radical dose is is no longer um, necessary and we're moving towards much more geometric target volume delineation to try and reduce late toxicities in these patients. So as an example here, this is a patient with a supraglottic cancer uh, and you can see the tumor outlined uh, behind the hyoid bone. And we would essentially, we would usually treat the entire larynx and involve nodal level to a, a radical dose and uninvolved nodal levels to a, an elective dose. And actually what we're doing now is moving away from that and treating the tumor plus a margin and an involved node plus a margin to a radical dose and then a further margin around that. So you may hear about the five plus five millimeter rule around both of those Dorothy, structures and then uninvolved. Dorothy, sorry, to, Dorothy, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. We can't see your slides moving. Oh, sorry. If you click on click on your fourth slide. Uh, click on where, oh, here. Yeah. Can you see that? No. If you go up to, I'm trying to see where you can show it as a slideshow, because at the moment we can only see your first yeah. slide, and then we can, yeah. Okay, if we do it this way, can you see that? Yeah. Can no, everyone just, see that? Well, click on slideshow at the very top. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. And go if you click on that and then say from current slide. So what next one across? Yeah. And then when you click your next button, it should move with you. Okay. Can you try, can you all see that? Did Sorry, you, can you can you all see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this so this was the first example of, of how we used to treat patients. So treating the entire subsite and involved nodal level, which is in the light blue, to a radical dose, and the uninvolved subsite, uh, uninvolved nodal levels to a, an elective dose. Um, and what we're doing now is moving. Can you see that? Sorry. Can you all see that? Um, yeah, it's still not showing as a slideshow. If you press from current slide again, does it um, up on the top left? Cut from current slide. Stand. See the two icons, see all the different icons at the top, Dorothy, with little just pictures. Just on the file. Uh, so the my whole screen is just showing the actual slide. Oh. Uh, so I do, I, would it, do you want me to share yeah. the slides? Would that be easier? That would be great. Thank you. Sorry, guys. No worries. Don't worry. No, don't worry at all. 
Yeah. Benita brings it up and Dorothy, you tell her when you want her to move. To yeah, the that's line. great. Thank you. Sorry. Thanks. I'll stop sharing. Okay, so everyone should be able to see that now. And I'll yeah, just go to, it. I've gone to your, can you see that Dorothy? I can, yeah. yeah. As long as everybody everybody else can. So what I was trying to illustrate is the light blue um, outline is the entire larynx encompassing the tumour plus uh, the involved nodal level and node plus a margin. And the magenta or the purple is the uh, uninvolved nodal level to an elective dose. And on the sagittal view, you can see the volume of the, of the structure that's being treated to a high dose, which is the entire larynx, really. And if you just go to the next slide, it's the same patient, but you can see there's a lot less of this patient being treated. So the, the tumour is outlined with a five millimetre margin around the tumour and, the, and the node, involved node. And though, though that volume is being treated to the um, macroscopic dose and then a further margin of five millimetres around both. Uh, plus the un the rest of the nodal levels to an elective dose. So we're getting much more conformal and treating smaller volumes with, with a view to trying to, uh, to, to um, um, reduce late toxicities in these patients. Of course, that means that you have to be very careful and very uh, rigorous with your, your verification and your imaging during treatment. Um, thank you. So the, the next big thing I wanted to talk about is really the, the sort of the TNM8 staging for oropharyngeal squamous cell carcinoma. Um, and there's, a, there's an understanding that actually HPV positive oropharyngeal cancer is now really considered a, a distinct biological and clinical entity. And these patients have a better prognosis and they, and they do better. And they're a different um, demographic to our traditional head and neck cancer patients. They're younger and they're fitter and they generally tend to be non-smokers. So the staging has been adapted in the current TNM8 staging to reflect this disease severity and prognosis. Um, however, current treatment guidelines do not re recommend modifications based on HPV status, but I think will be, will be changing quite, quite soon in the near future. And there, there are several trials that are running at the moment that are en enrolling these patients looking at surgical intervention, de-escalation of radiation, alterations in systemic therapy, um, based on T stage and N stage and smoking status, because that does impact on prognosis. Uh, next slide, please. So I, I'm not going to go through the whole staging for, for uh, oropharyngeal cancer. I think you definitely need to know this for the exam. Um, just really to show the highlights. So it's really the end staging where things have changed. So um, N1 disease, which was traditionally just a single node up to three centimeters, now is, you know, IPSI and bilateral nodes up to six centimeters. Um, and then N2 is uh, nodes greater than six centimetres. Um, and if you look, uh, if you just click on the next um, slide, so if you look at the staging of this, so um, if, you, if you probably re may or may not remember, but stage one and stage two head and neck cancer, so T1N0, T2N0, are traditionally treated with single modality treatments because they tend to have a better prognosis. But if you look at what is now encompassed in stage two, it's actually the T3, N1 and N2 disease. And that's to reflect the better prognosis in these patients. Um, so if you were adjusting treatment based on stage, these patients will be getting single modality therapy, but we need to wait for the results of de-escalation trials before we can do that. Um, next slide, thank you. So I'm just gonna talk about the major trials that have, phase three trials that have reported over the last 18 months or so. And, and the first one is de-escalate, which is a UK trial uh, run by Rahish and Mahana, phase three, uh, in good prognosis, HPV positive um, uh, oropharyngeal cancers. And these patients were randomized to cisplatin and radiotherapy, which is standard, versus cetuximab and radiotherapy with a view to reducing toxicity, acute and late toxicities um, without compromising uh, um, uh, um, survival. Uh, and what the trial showed is actually there was no difference in toxicity swallowing or quality of life. But more, more importantly, that the overall survival at two years was worse with cetuximab and radiotherapy where, with an absolute difference of 7.5%. And actually more of these patients recurred with cetuximab and radiotherapy. So it was a spectacularly negative trial. And if you just uh, go to the next slide, and that just shows the capital markers for survival. And um, these, the, the patients did a lot worse with cetuximab than, uh, than standard of care. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So with the subgroup analyses uh, across all the subgroups, patients 
treated with cisplatin did better. And what they did is they went and reached, because these patients were originally staged on the TNM7 staging, and they restaged these patients on TNM8 uh, and looked at the survival. And actually, for those patients with stage one and two, still they still had a, a worse, worse overall survival at two years uh, of a 5% difference. And for stage three cancers, patients did better with cisplatin. Um, so there's really no evidence to de-escalate um, with uh, cetuximab, and it doesn't reduce toxicity. So the RTOG 1016 study is actually an American study, and it's a similar start trial, but looking at patients with um, higher risk cancers and patients, a, a larger group of patients, because the primary endpoint is overall survival. And again, patients treated with cetuximab and radiotherapy did worse than those treated with standard of care, both uh, in terms of overall survival and progression free survival with no improvement in late or acute toxicity. Um, and so essentially, you know, cetuximab radiotherapy is in, inferior to cisplatin uh, in terms of uh, all survival outcomes with no gain in, 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 tox in toxicity profile. So I'm just going to move away from um, radical treatments and talk about the Keynote 040 study, which is uh, a phase three study uh, of quite a large group of patients who were randomized to pembrolizumab, which is the PD-1 inhibitor versus the standard of care at the time, which was single agent treatment. Um, and what the study showed is that actually the median survival was slightly better with, uh, with uh, pembrolizumab, but more importantly, less, less toxicity, less grade three toxicities and a different toxicity profile. So mainly hypothyroidism, whereas patients treated with chemotherapy uh, had made, uh, had uh, significant, uh, significantly more of them had grade three fatigue, uh, and the and the, um, the 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 big point to note about this is that this was designed to be a study in the first line setting. But actually, if you look at the standard of care, single agent drugs are not really standard of care for first line setting. Um, so we'll have to come back to that because it, it, the, this trial does not um, uh, does does not. Um, does not support the use of pembrolizumab in the first line setting. Uh, next line, and this is just the kaplan my curve to show the absolute difference in survival between the two arms. So the Keynote 048 study came after that, which is again a big randomized study. And this, this, this trial did look at uh, comparing pembrolizumab in combination with chemo and on its own with standard first line uh, systemic therapy, which is generally the extreme regimen, which is platinum doublet, so cisplatin or carboplatin 5-FU with cetuximab, um, and large trials, so co-primary endpoints of overall survival and progression-free survival. And one of the things the trial, the trial did look at was stratify patients according to what we call a combined prognostic score. Uh, and that's really a, a measure of pdl one expression, but looking at staining within the tumor cells as well as other cells such as lymphocytes and macrophages, and, and dividing that by the number of viable tumor cells to, get, to give you a score. So if we go to the next slide, what we should see some kaplan my curves looking at outcomes based on the CPS score. So patients on, on, the, on the extreme left, um, patients with CPS score of over 20, so highly stay, high, very highly staining for pdl one did much better when you compared pembrolizumab on its own versus the standard of care, which is the extreme in terms of survival. Um, and even those with a modest CP1, CPS1 score between 1 and 20 still did better with pembrolizumab alone than with the extreme regimen. And if you look at all comers in the whole population, again, um, patients who were treated with pembro and plus chemotherapy, so platinum doublet, did better than patients who, had, who were treated with just the who were treated with extreme. So the trial concluded that actually PEMBRO does uh, offer better, better overall survival uh, compared to the extreme regimen with a better safety profile. Um, and in patients who were treated with PEMBRO and chemo uh, co compared to extreme did better but, um, uh, overall. There was no difference in progression free survival, survival but the data does support pembro pembrolizumab and chemotherapy as standard of care uh, in the first line setting, which, irrespective of pdl one so whether it's one or 21. Now, just this is a bit of an oddball because it was an unusual trial. It doesn't really fit in here, but it was a big, it is a phase three trial that was reported last year. And it's interesting because it's one of the few trials in head and neck cancers where 
It looks at adjusting the sequencing of treatment. So it's a Swedish trial, um, phase three, looking at um, preoperative versus postoperative radiotherapy and resectable oral cavity cancers. Um, and these are generally patients that have a poor prognosis. Um, and it was based on the original ArtScan trial, which suggested a better local control and accelerated radiotherapy arm. And what they hypothesized is that local control would be superior in, a, in the preoperative accelerated radiotherapy arm. So giving uh, twice daily fractions over four and a half weeks compared to standard post-operative radiation. Obviously, all patients had surgery in the interim. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, five minutes. Thank you. So there was no difference in, in local control. And unfortunately, the overall survival was worse um, uh, with the preoperative arm and worse grade three dysphagia. So a negative trial uh, with worse toxicity preoperative arm. Thank you. So the new standard of care, well, uncertain during COVID-19, but it's likely that Pembro and chemo will be the standard of care for large volume disease with a good with a with a modest CPS score and Pembro alone for low volume disease with a good CPS score. I think there's little role for um, uh, cetuximab and radiotherapy um, and escalation in uh, the primary chemo radiotherapy setting. Will be, de will be determined by the results from Keynote 412 and in the post PDL1 in post operative setting from Keynote 689. And again, with de escalation of radiation dose, uh, we will wait the results from Pathos. Uh, I can't see what I've written at the bottom there. And then de escalation in primary radiotherapy uh, will be looked at in the trial called the RESPECT study. If we just move to the next slide. Um, so this is on the horizon. It's a study from the BEATS and looking at de-escalating the dose in the elective uh, in the elective nodal levels in patients with good prognosis, HPV positive or a pharyngeal cancer. And the, the, the aim is to look at um, reduced toxicity without compromising outcomes. And then the next slide, so the, just I have to mention this because this is the big proton study that's coming out for oropharyngeal cancer, again, with patients in patients with good prognosis, oropharyngeal cancer, looking at very high leaf conformal radiotherapy using protons. And this has been approved and will open soon. So in summary, the focus still remains on improving outcomes and reducing toxicity, but immunotherapy is going to embed itself for high risk disease in the metastatic setting, and possibly in the primary and post-operative setting. Um, we're moving very much towards de-escalation of treatment in the HPV-positive oropharyngeal cancers, but we do need to wait until trials are reported. And target volume delineation is much, much more conformal, so verification imaging is even more important than before. And I think that is it. Thank you.